Hebrews chapter number 12. The writer of Hebrews was inspired to pin this down. Verse number 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Lord, we thank you for the good congregational singing. We thank you for the good special singing. Lord, I'm glad you don't have to have music or an orchestra or anything. I'm thankful for the words of the songs and how they ministered to our hearts. And Lord, we're without excuse not to bow these unworthy heads and say, Hallelujah, what a Savior. And isn't the Lord Jesus something wonderful? Lord, thank you for the good testimonies. Each one praised you, bragged on you. And Lord, we're thankful for the saints of God. For you said in the word of God, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I'm glad folks testified to the goodness of God in their lives. Now, Father, we do pray that, Lord, you'd help us now from the scriptures. We pray that the word of God would become alive, may it enlighten our minds, and may it truly uh, bless our hearts, and may we draw closer to God. I do pray for those that are working with the teens over on the other side. You'd bless their efforts. I pray for those young people. Lord, you would strengthen them. You would grow them in the Lord. And God, you'd certainly put a hedge about them. I do pray for those that are sick and afflicted. I pray for Miss Jackie. You would touch her and help her. We know that her brother Brian would be here had she not uh, befallen this injury. And I pray you'd strengthen her and help her to heal quickly. I pray for little Chloe. Lord, you'd touch her and help her. I do pray for Miss Sonny. You would help her in her upcoming surgery. I pray for others that are sick or providentially hindered. God, you would touch them and be with them. I pray, as Brother Josh prayed, that, Lord, if there be anybody in the building tonight or anybody watching online that's lost without Christ, I pray they'd come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Uh, Lord, I do pray... Uh, for Cannon Mountain Baptist Church and the revival meeting that's been going on for over a month. I pray you'd continue to send revival. I pray you'd strengthen those people, Lord. I know physically they have to be tired, but I pray you'd refresh them physically, revive them spiritually. May it fan throughout this land. And God, may we see great revival come to America one more time. I pray for Brother Jeffrey. Lord, you'd touch him. You'd strengthen him. You'd help his mind. And God, you'd give him clarity of thought and discernment and help him physically as he continues to preach what thus saith the Lord. Uh, Father, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart here tonight. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. And I pray you'd be glorified in our midst. Uh, Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, bless now. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Uh, amen. As a way of introduction and looking at these verses, uh, I want you to see, first of all, the, uh, we must realize the scrutiny we're held to. Look again at verse number 1. The Bible says, uh, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, the apostle that was uh, uh, blessed to pin this uh, 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 book down, uh, in chapter number 11, it's referred to as the chapter of faith uh, or the hall of faith. Uh, we find that uh, there are many instance, instances. There's the patriarchs uh, who move by faith. Uh, there's men like Noah who by faith uh, build an ark and preach righteousness. Uh, there's Moses who chose the affliction of the people of God uh, rather than to live in the house of Pharaoh uh, and rather to endure the pleasure of sin for a season. Uh, there there's other great men of faith. Uh, then it gets down in the chapter and it mentions others. Don't even call their name. Uh, and it talks about them being stoned and being sown asunder, uh, choosing to live in sins and caves. Uh, and it said they had not received the promise. Uh, 
They didn't know about Calvary. They was looking uh, ahead to the cross, Brother Ron. Uh, they didn't uh, uh, experience songs like at Calvary like us. Uh, we look back at what Jesus had done. Uh, they hadn't received the promises of the assurance uh, of being saved by grace through faith. Uh, 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 they were trusting uh, in what God would do. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, 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 they gave their lives. Uh, uh, they lived uh, 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 in uh, perilous times. Times, uh, uh, and you and I are blessed uh, uh, to live in peaceful times uh, and enjoy the promises of God. Uh, and wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, the writer is saying because they gave their lives, because of their faith, because of what they did, uh, you and I ought to live up to the promises of God. Amen. We are going to be scrutinized based on what we've received in comparison to what they endured. Think about it. We had no peril coming to church tonight. We have no peril in going out tomorrow night and passing out gospel tracts. We have no peril uh, of standing up and saying we love Jesus. They would have done that. Many of them, they gave their lives knowing that they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be scrutinized. That crowd will say, we gave our lives. What did you give? Hmm. Real sober. We must realize the scrutiny we're held to. We must take full advantage of the privileges afforded us. Hmm? Listen. What a blessing to be saved. What a blessing to be saved at this time when the Lord could come back at any moment. What a blessing to have the privilege to let other people know they can be saved. We're going to be scrutinized. We need to realize the scrutiny we're held to, and then we need to remove all the hindrances from our lives. Look what it said in verse number 1. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Anything that holds us down or holds us back, we need to get rid of it. And the sin which does so easily beset us. Hmm? If there's any sin in our life, we need to get it cleansed and taken care of. But any weight. Hmm? Do you ever have to carry any dead weight? Just weighs you down? Hmm? Can I say... A lot of churches have to carry dead weight. Hmm? Listen, I know who's here tonight. Your Sunday night, your Wednesday night crowd, that's the backbone of your church. Sunday morning, there's a lot of folks that'll blow in and blow out. Now, some can't come because they're providentially hindered. I understand that, but most of them could come back. Amen. You say, what do we do? We have to carry their weight. We shouldn't have to. But we do. We're carrying dead weight. But listen, if you're not careful, you'll let that weigh you down. If you're not careful, you'll let what somebody else is not doing weigh you down. If you're not careful, uh, you'll let your job weigh you down. You'll let something else weigh you down. And, and any weight that keeps us from serving God, we need to lay that thing aside. Amen. Because let me help you something. I'll ever load you up. Did you ever get loaded up on something? Am I the only one here? Uh, I hope you're listening. Amen. I hope you're not snoring. Uh, I saw how much Brother Ron ate today. Miss Ron, you need to keep poking him, keep him awake. huh? Uh, but we need to lay aside those weights. Because if you're not careful, you'll get so weighted down, you won't be serving God. Hmm? You'll come to church and you'll warm a pew. But you won't be serving God. We need to remove all the hindrances. We need to realize the scrutiny that we're held to. But then we find that we're to run our own race. Look in verse number 1. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hmm? Can I say that every one of us that are saved have been placed in the arena to run the race. Right. Now, Colonel, I can't run your race, and you can't run my race. 
The problem is, is when I try to run your race or try to run your race for, for you or I try to run Brother Tony's race for him. Brother Tony, if I was you, I'd do this and I'd do that and I'd do this. Well, the only problem is I'm not you. Miss hmm? yeah. Brittany used to sing a song, could you uh, uh, do this if you walked in that man's shoes or that woman's shoes? It's real easy for me from the cheap seats, Miss Pam, to tell you how to run your race. But I've never walked in your shoes and thank the Lord I haven't because I don't like high heels, you know what I'm saying? Huh? Huh? But we try to run other people's race and tell other people how to run their race but we don't run our own race. Amen. Hmm? Let me help you something. The only person you're going to give an account of to God for is yourself. And you've got to run your race. And you've got to run it with patience. Hmm? I think I've told you all this. One time I, years ago I used to run track. I know I don't look like it. But I used to. And uh, uh I guess because I could, you know, back back then they, they just decided I'd run all the races. Well, the first three is pretty good. But then after that, it wasn't real good, you know, because you can only run so much. And it was always the fourth race was the mile. What a blessing. Hmm? Uh I not only ran track, I ran cross country. I liked cross country better because you wasn't running around a track. You was out running around until we ran Bethel. Let me go talk to the guy who went to Bethel. Y'all bunch of cheats and scoundrels. You're supposed to run a mile cross country. Well, Bethel changed their course about two and a half miles. You know, we're about midway through that thing. I'm thinking, I'm dying. Where's the end of this thing? And we're running through the woods and over creeks and everything. Well, they went to Frisch's and got a sandwich and sitting at the finish line waiting for us because they're a bunch of cheats, aren't you? Okay, he admitted it. Uh, but we'd run, you know, fourth race come around, it was the mile. And I'll never forget, we was running uh, against this one uh, 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 team, and, and they had a guy that was famous for the mile, and the coach comes up to me and says, Hey, I want you to start out running as hard as you can because he's going to try and keep up with you, and he's going to die out, and you'll win the race. So I did. I went out as hard as I could go after already running three races. I got about to the second turn, and I'm dying. Everybody in that place that has run that race, they passing me. I tell you who ran out of wind and who died out, me. Huh? I was dying just to finish. See, when we run our race, we've got to run it with patience. I've seen people get saved or supposedly get saved, and man, they're ready to turn the world upside down, and boom, they go. And you never see them again. Larry Seals said this one time. He said, uh, you can set a dog on fire and he'll run for a while. And that's what happens a lot of times. People get this zeal and they want to, boom, shoot out like a cannon. Can I say, it's not about how fast you run. It's about finishing. And we need to run with patience. And patience is a dirty word in the foster household. But you've got to run with patience. And can I say this? If you're not careful, you've got to have patience with people. Because not everybody is going to be doing it maybe the way you think they ought to do it. Just have patience with them. But you run your race with patience. We've got to run our own race. We've got to run it with patience. And we've got to run to please the Lord. Let me ask you this. In the middle of your race on this Sunday evening, is the Lord pleased with how you're running? Hmm? Well, I'm not going to preach on that verse number one. I'm glad because y'all went to sleep on me. I'm interested in verse number two. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And I want to preach for just a few minutes on that thought, looking unto Jesus. The only way we can lay aside the weights, the only way we can uh, have our sin uh, cleansed, the only way we can run with patience, the only way that we can live up to the scrutiny that we'll be held to is if we keep our eyes on Jesus. 
I wonder tonight, are you looking unto Jesus? If you're not careful, you get to looking around. You get to looking around, you're going to be in trouble. If you're not careful, you'll get to looking at your problems or your circumstances or your trials, you're going to be in trouble. If you're not careful, you get to looking at other Christians, you're going to get in trouble. We're to be found looking unto Jesus. And in these verses, I find what will help us when we gaze upon Jesus, when we look upon Jesus. What blessed me about the songs tonight, they were all about Jesus. It helped me focus on Jesus. Uh, what blessed me from the testimonies is people were bragging on Jesus. Uh, it kept my attention on Jesus. Uh, the writer of Hebrews uh, in chapter number 12 uh, is exhorting us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Uh, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll never be disappointed. Uh, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll always be filled with hope. Uh, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, uh, you'll never get off course. Uh, you'll always run the race the way you're supposed to. Uh, look at some things about looking unto Jesus. Can I say we should look unto Jesus and the example he portrayed in hardship. Anybody ever have any hardship? Well Jesus gives us the example of how we're to handle hardship. We're to look at this example and how uh, he handled it. Look if you will again verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, we're to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, he became the author of our faith when we believed on him and trusted him as Lord and Savior. Uh, and he pinned our name down in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, one of these days we'll see him as he is. Uh, we don't know what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, uh, we shall see him as he is. Uh, and then he'll be the finisher of our faith because uh, we'll no longer walk by faith, we'll walk by sight. Uh, and we, through the eye of faith, are to look unto Jesus uh, and see how he handled uh, the hardship. Uh, uh, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, uh, he endured the cross and despised the shame uh, and is set down in the right hand of the throne of God. Listen to me, uh, my dear friends. Uh, 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 he looked beyond the hardship uh, and saw what was on the other side of it uh, and he had joy in his soul uh, and he endured and despised the shame uh, and the cross uh, and all the hardship. Uh, he despised it, uh, but he handled it because of what was on the other side of it. Uh, Brother Phil, Miss Kathy sings this song, but when he was on the cross, he saw you trusting in him. He saw all of us putting our faith and trust in him. That helped him through the hardship. And then he saw us, Brother Ray, in glory, uh, in our glorified body around the throne of Christ, uh, uh, praising him and worshiping him, uh, singing that new song, uh, and praising that all glory and honor and praise uh, go to the darling Lamb of God. Uh, he saw the end, uh, and he said, It's worth it. Uh, I'll endure it. Uh, you and I face hardships. Uh, if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus, uh, and we'll look at his example. Uh, uh, friend, we can look a little farther on down the road. Uh, realize this is not the end. Uh, one of these days we'll be in glory. Uh, we'll be seated around his throne. Uh, hey, we'll uh, experience uh, uh, the joy of the Lord in the presence of the Lord. Uh, walking on streets of gold, walls of jasper, uh, gates of pearl, uh, and in the uh, city that he's the light of and will ever be with him. Uh, It'll let your hardship seem a little bit smaller than what it is. Uh, listen, he showed us how to handle it. You handle it by looking beyond it. Listen, no man was ever abused like Jesus Christ was. And he did it without guile in his mouth. He yielded his life and shed his blood to become our Redeemer, to pay for our sin debt, a debt he did not owe. 
And my dear friends, he sat, that, he sat there and let him, them abuse him. Let them clear their throats and spit upon him. Let them pluck his beard from his face. Let them plait a crown of thorns upon his brow. He allowed that to happen because he looked ahead and saw the result of it. My dear friends, a lot of times we can't see beyond the next curve of life or on down the road, but we can look at the end of the book and see how it ends up. And friend, when you realize this is not the end, there's a greater day coming, there's a brighter day coming, friend, you can endure the hardness. Paul wrote, uh, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The only way you can endure it is by keeping your eyes on Jesus. You know, the only way you can lay aside the weight is by looking unto Jesus. My dear friends, looking unto Jesus, we'll see the example he portrayed in hardship. Not only that, we'll see the endurance he displayed while hurting. Look again at verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our, our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of God. My dear friends, he endured the cross. Now, I know some of us have suffered, and some of us have faced sickness, and faced loneliness, and faced hurting, and faced loss. But there's never been one of us nailed to a cross. Amen. There's never been one of us beaten beyond recognition. There's never been one of us that has faced what Jesus Christ faced. He endured that. All while hurting for you and I. And if we'll look unto Jesus and the endurance he displayed while hurting and realize that he said he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Realize that he has sealed us unto the day of redemption. Realize that, my dear friends, uh, He is with us through it all. We too can endure it. Anybody like pain? I don't like pain. I don't like thinking about pain. Last week, I got to face the worst term that a doctor can say to me. E-M-G. Anybody ever had one? Nobody's had one? I'm going to ask the doctors to sign you up for one. I've had, I don't know how many, Mom, half a dozen. I have bone spurs on my neck right now, and I went and saw my, my doctor, and he just, and they're ugly. I mean, they're bad. Three of them, three different vertebrae with bone spurs. I have constant numbness and and going down my arms it really is bad when I'm driving for a long time Seth because I don't know why I'm picking on you tonight I guess you're closest to me uh, but when I'm driving my hands go numb I can't feel the steering wheel and it's gotten worse and and so doctor ran one test and then he said and I want an EMG because I want to compare it to the last EMG you had what a blessing here's what an EMG is brother Ron I'm going to sign you up for one The doctor sticks needles hooked up to electrodes in your nerves all the way down your arms and sends electric shock to see if you have nerve damage. It's a blessing. There was one point I was about ready to see if he had some nerve damage. I don't like pain. I knew going to the hospital I was going to have pain. I've had a bunch of them. I don't. I knew it. EMG, I told Mr. Nett, why do I have to have another EMG? Because he thinks you need one. I don't need one. I, don't, I never needed one. There is one thing I don't need to hear is EMG. It's horrible. While I'm laying there, letting this guy electrify me, I remembered what my darling wife said. She said, you can endure anything for 30 seconds. She said that as we about 
as we was about ready to board a roller coaster. You know, you can endure anything for 30 seconds. Well, I'm laying there, and I endured it. Because if you can focus, you can really get through anything. Amen. Matter of fact, it hurt. But leading up to it was worse than dealing with it. And a lot of times, the devil will play on our minds leading up to something and makes it worse than actually going through it. Hmm? He huffs and he puffs, but I got good news, he can't blow our house down. And the Lord Jesus endured the worst affliction that anybody wrapped in flesh could go through and we're to look to him and if he can go through that, we can certainly face whatever hardship comes into our life. You can endure if you look to Jesus. Can I say this? Looking unto Jesus will find his entrance into his honor. Look again in verse number 2. It says that he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, he faced the cross. Yes, he faced the shame. Yes, he faced the rejection. Yes, he was uh, misused and abused. Uh, yes, he faced and endured uh, and had to uh, deal with things that uh, we can't even really scope uh, in our minds how bad it was. Uh, but in the end, uh, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, when he said it was over uh, and he was buried, rose again, lived amongst men uh, 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 for some uh, uh, 40 days, uh, 30 days afterwards, then he ascended it back up on high uh, and he walked in uh, and he entered into uh, the glory of God and sat down in honor at the right hand of the Father uh, and the Father was pleased uh, it pleased him to bruise him uh, that you and I could be saved from our sins uh, can I say one of these days no matter what we face Romans 8.18 is in the book. Romans 8.18 8, says this, uh, uh, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh, neighbor, there's coming a day uh, when the hardships, uh, when the uh, endurance, uh, when the pain, uh, when everything we faced, uh, it won't even be a memory. Uh, when we get to see Him, uh, when we're in His presence, uh, it won't matter. Uh, we'll wish we would have lived a hundred more lives for His glory. Uh, we wish we'd have done more for Him. Uh, it won't matter. It'll all be over, uh, and we'll be with the king forevermore. Uh, Amen. One of these days, we'll enter into his honor. Uh, one of these days, just like he did with Stephen, he's going to stand up from the throne and receive us home. And what a day that'll be. Uh, it'll be worth it, neighbor. We're worth every mile and every trial. As the songwriter wrote, uh, uh, we need to just keep looking to Jesus. Mm, friends, the Bible was given uh, so we could understand and so we'd have something to put our faith in. And the Lord tells us that a lot of the things written in the Bible were for our ensample or our example, and the life of Christ is for our example to show us how we're to live. And when we look unto Jesus we find that we can face anything because one day it would be worth it all. I thought about this. Looking unto Jesus, we'll find the enlightenment, enlightenment for us to hold to. Look at verse number 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. While he went to the cross, he became the sin of the world. 
The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He became every filthy, vile sin that would ever be committed by any man and every man. And then he took the handwriting of ordinances that were contrary to us, all the laws that we broke, all the laws that we would break, and he nailed them to the cross. He who was holy became sinful that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in him. It was such a contradiction uh, that the Holy One of God uh, uh, became filthy and vile uh, that you and I uh, can dwell in His holiness. Uh, he endured such a contradiction uh, and the writer says consider Him. Uh, consider Him. Uh, not just consider what He did. Consider him. Uh, I got to thinking about that word consider. Uh, and to consider means to observe fully. Uh, and we're to observe uh, as much as we can with our finite minds uh, the Lord Jesus fully. Uh, just observe him. Uh, oh, we sung about him tonight. Uh, folks bragged about him tonight. Uh, but have you really considered him? Uh, did you take it in? Uh, wonderful is his name. Uh, Oh, did you consider in? Uh, hallelujah, what a Savior. Uh, did you consider in? He's a present help in time of need. Uh, did you really consider him? Uh, the one we sang about. The one they brag about. Uh, uh, he's your Lord. Uh, he's your helper. Uh, he's the lifter up of your head. Uh, he's the lifter up of your heart. Uh, he's the one that David said, I look unto the hills. Uh, which come right it's from coming my help uh, he's the one have you considered him uh, listen uh, have you considered that Jesus is the theme of the Bible uh, have you considered that Jesus is the truth of the Bible uh, have you considered that Jesus is the treasure uh, of the Bible uh, can I say he's God's alphabet uh, he's God's author uh, he's God's architect uh, have you considered uh, he's the savior of the sinner? Uh, have you considered he's the shepherd of the saints? Uh, have you considered he's the sovereign of the sanctified? Uh, have you considered uh, he's the igniter of life? Uh, have you considered he's the initiator of love? Uh, have you considered he's the instigator of liberty? Uh, have you considered he's the lion uh, of the tribe of Judah? Yet he's the lily uh, of the valleys. Uh, have you considered he is Lord? Uh, I said he's Lord. Uh, I said he's Lord. Uh, he's not going to be Lord. Uh, he is Lord. Uh, he's always been Lord. Uh, he will always be Lord. Uh, he's Lord of Lords uh, and King of Kings. Uh, have you considered him, my dear friends? Uh, and he's your personal Savior. He's your dearest friend. He's your Lord. Have you considered Him? No wonder the writer says, looking unto Jesus. He said in verse number 3, For consider Him that endured such contradiction of sinners against Himself. Here's why. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. If you're not looking to Him and you're not considering Him and who He is, you'll get weary. Paul said not to be weary in well-doing, but you'll get weary. And you'll come to church, and you'll sing the songs, and you'll go through the motions, but you'll faint in your mind. You've heard me tell you a million times, the battlefield is our minds. That's where the devil attacks us. And that's where you'll fall short because you're not looking to Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Has, ever, has the devil ever told you you was a failure? Yeah. Has the devil ever convinced you you was a failure? Now let me ask you this question. When you was convinced you was a failure, was you looking at Jesus? You was looking at you. Let me help you with something. In our flesh dwelleth no good things. We're all failures. We all fall and come short of the glory of God. 
But in Jesus, I sinneth no more. In Jesus, the inner man sinneth no more. He's been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Go read 1 John 5. Hey, in Jesus, I'm robed in His righteousness. Huh? In Jesus, I'm justified by faith. That doesn't mean I'm justified as if I'd never sinned. That means I'm justified as if I'd never been a sinner. Uh, that means uh, I'm as pure as Adam was when God formed him from the dust of the earth uh, and breathed in his nostrils the breath of, the breath of life. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, in Jesus, I'm not a failure. Uh, in Jesus, I'm a joint heir to the throne of Christ. Uh, in Jesus, uh, I'm holy because he's holy, my dear friend. But when you get your eyes off of Jesus, you'll get weary, and the devil will cause you to faint in your mind. You're a failure. The devil will cause you to doubt. The devil will cause you to distrust. The devil will tell you you can never be good enough. The devil's a liar and the father of it. He'll tell you all kinds of stuff. And you'll believe it and faint in your mind if you're not looking at Jesus. But you know what happens when you're looking at Jesus? Devil comes in your mind. He says, you're no good. You'll say, yep, but he, he's my goodness. Devil say, you'll never be righteous. Nope, but in him I am righteous. Devil say, you're a failure. You're right, but in him I've already overcome. Huh? See, you'll not faint in your mind when you're looking at Jesus. And by the way, I'm not looking at Randy. I'm looking at Jesus up there. Well, as I'm looking at Randy, I'm in trouble. He ain't no better than me. I'm trying to tell you. The enlightenment, enlightenment for us in that verse is to keep our minds on Jesus, our eyes on Jesus, or else we'll faint in our own minds. And then let me say this lastly. Because of all these things, verses 1, 2, and 3, we're to earnestly live as not to halt. We're to look to Jesus so we don't halt, so we don't get knocked off course, so we don't uh, end up on the sideline while other people are running their race. Look with me in verse number 15. The Bible says this, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble with you, and thereby many be defiled. You quit looking to Jesus, and you're going to fail the grace of God. And when you fail the grace of God, here's what happens. Your flesh kicks into high gear. When it kicks into high gear, rather Brother Brian than saying, I blew it, I need to get right with God, we start trying to justify why we failed. Well, if God was as good to me as he is Brother Tommy, I wouldn't have failed. Well, if God did for me what he did for Miss Sharon, then I wouldn't have been in this shape. And when we start justifying our sinfulness and our failure, all of a sudden a root of bitterness starts springing up in our heart. And if you don't get that thing taken care of quickly, you're going to be in trouble because it will defile you. That root of bitterness is nasty. It's kind of like a dandelion in your yard. If you just chop it off with a weed eater, it'll be back overnight. You've got to get the roots out of it. And can I say that root of bitterness takes root in our hearts and it begins to spread and it'll change our countenance. It'll change our disposition towards other people. It'll change uh, our walk with the Lord. Uh, and if you're not careful, you'll be so nasty, nobody will want to be around you. Can I say there's a lot of people out of church tonight. They're blaming Christians and everybody else, and they're sitting there bitter against God. And it's all because somewhere down the road they took their eyes off of Jesus. They ended up in the shape they're in. And they've let the devil convince them, let their flesh convince them that it's somebody else's fault. You've gotten bitter, nasty. Don't even like themselves. It's all because they took their eyes off of Jesus. 
we're to look diligently to Jesus lest we fail the grace of God. And let me help you something. You take your eyes off him, you will fail the grace of God. God help us to be found just looking at Jesus. You look at Jesus, everything will be all right in your race. Everything will be all right. You'll know when to get rid of the weight. You'll know how to endure. You'll be, you'll be all right in all of it if you keep your eyes by faith on Jesus because he's never been anything but good to you. And he'll help you with every step you take. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song. Maybe you've taken your eyes off of Jesus. Tonight be a good night to get them back on him. Maybe you just need to come and thank him for what he endured for you. Maybe you just need to come and tell him you love him tonight. Maybe tonight he's dealt with you about something totally different. Whatever the Lord's speaking to your heart, the altar's open. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, help us to live our lives looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, strengthen our faith tonight. Lord, you've given to every man a measure of faith, but Lord, only those that hear the word of God will have their faith strengthened and grown. God, I pray you'd grow our faith. I pray you'd help us to run our race that'll please you. Help us to lay aside any weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Maybe somebody's weighted down with something tonight. They need to come and roll that over on the Lord. Maybe somebody tonight needs to get born again. I pray they'd come give their heart to Jesus. But maybe some of your children tonight they haven't looked beyond the hindrance or the obstacle or the hardship to see the joy that's over on the other side. Help them tonight to get a glimpse of glory and give them some wind in their sails for their journey. Whatever the need is tonight, speak to hearts, Father. Father, we'll bless you and praise you for all that you do. Have your will and way now, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.